Hi guys, I'm uh, Osvaldo Nasir here, uh, Director of Accounts and Strategy for Global RevGen. Um, I'm here with uh, Rob Brown, uh, who you might know for his time at um, Navitas. Um, he's agreed to take a bit of his time uh, to answer a few questions for us, so thanks a lot Rob for being here with us. Um, My pleasure. Uh, today I've got a, a couple of questions. The, the first one is, um, uh, what's your outlook for uh, the higher education um, sector in general uh, in Australia but overseas? Uh, how do you see that evolving through the years in the next three, five, maybe ten years to come? Um, if you could give us your thoughts on that, that'd be great. Um, I think the, the change was afoot in the higher education sector anyway. It was coming. Um, I don't think there's a university out there that hasn't had these discussions internally about how do we adapt to the to the you know, the changing landscape, the digital landscape, the more mobile world that we live in, and the fact that, you know, the, 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 the university model, particularly the, you know, the three-year bachelor and the two-year or one to two-year master's degree was, was conceived for a, for, a, for a different time when there was a, you know, there, were, there, were, there was a real need for a certain group, number of people in that city or that part of that city with that particular skill to go and apply their knowledge and skills in whether it was managing factories or, or supply chains or whatever it was. And, and, and the world has obviously changed. And, and I think it's fair to say that universities have, 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 have you know, it, it's difficult to change when you're a, you know, three, four hundred year old institution um, or a two hundred year old institution. If you, if, you know, if you're talking about, you know, the Australian context. And um, but I think what we're going to see, I think we'll look back in in a couple of decades time and say that COVID was an accelerant um, rather than a change agent. What it did is it accelerated? If you look at the trends that were happening in the in the higher education sector, so a move to you know consuming lectures online rather than going into campus and sitting in a lecture theatre, um, you know blended blended learning models where um, you know with a lot more digital sort of digital content, um, it's been going that way anyway. Um, but I think COVID has has brought forward the acceleration or sped up the acceleration by a decade, yeah. uh, which means that, you know, uh, and, and universities, obviously they'd be, they'd, you know, they, everything's had to go on, online. But online, online today is Zoom or it's, it's, you know, it's Microsoft Teams or, but that's not online delivery. I mean, that's, that's, that's part of it, but it's not, it's not the, um, so I think I think we're going to see I think we're going to see a real acceleration. There's going to be a massive influx of of um, capital into edtech solutions. I mean, we've all you know we've had these discussions for the last 15, 20 years about what does online learning look like, and nobody's really you know nobody's really come up with the the sort of format. Um, that's that's taken off like a rocket. There are there are different versions out there, and some you know some of them have been successful to varying degrees. But I think we are going to see a lot of innovation in that space, and I think universities, um, the universities that are that, that, that are really really thinking about this from a from a you know almost looking to disrupt themselves, mm. because I think that's what they're going to need to do. Um, so that's one theme. I think I think the, the the role of the generic university, I think that will be seriously challenged the longer this goes on. Um, you know, if you look at a market like Australia, you know, 42, 43 universities, um, the you know, on the on the second Tuesday of March every year, you've got forty-three lecturers mm -hmm. teaching economics one oh one. Um, and yet you know, one or two of them are absolutely the guns at that. Mm. And it might be somebody from Swinburne University. It might be, you know, Mr. Jacobs, Bob Jacobs mm. from Swinburne University, or it might be, you know, Susie Catterall from Edith Cowan University. And I think, I think we're going to see probably with universities the similar sort of thing that happened to the newspaper industry where con content will be syndicated. Mm. And, you know, in the 1980s, 90s even, you know, pre-internet, 
Every major publishing house, newspaper house, had its foreign bureau in Moscow, Sarajevo, Tokyo, and you'd have, you know, 300 journalists working for different, different, uh, different pa papers writing about the same event that had happened in Moscow or that happened in London or whatever. Today, that content is syndicated. So you open up the City Morning Herald, and if you look at the bottom, you'll see it was syndicated from The Guardian, that particular mm -hmm. article. Another one on the next page was syndicated from The Washington Post. So I think we're going to start to see that in, in the university sector, um, where it just doesn't make economic sense for 43 universities, 42, 43 universities, to deliver the same content, based essentially, on the same day, every single year, I think there'll be one or two or three um, superstar teachers and lecturers that will emerge. And we've seen this model, we've seen it in the Ellicos industry, the, 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 the sort of ESL industry overseas, people like Kelly Mock in Hong Kong, uh, an English teacher, young, young female English teacher, she's in her early 30s now, she earns about $5 million a year teaching English um, in Hong Kong. Advertised on buses, she's a superstar, she's like a pop star. There are a couple in Korea. Um, but we're starting to see this in the higher ed sector. Um, uh, Norman Nemro from uh, Brigham Young University, his accounting course, I mean, even Harvard Business School, they recommend their students take, the, take uh, Brigham Young uh, 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 accounting elective because it's the, it's the best in class. It's the, the, uh, so I, th I think we're going to start seeing this as the model sort of starts to, 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 to change and morph, break down, whichever, whichever how, you know, um, uh, adjective you want to use, I think we're going to start to see the rise of superstar teachers. And, uh, and uh, so that's one. And then the other, the other thing that I think, um, you know, so, so the generic universities, I think there's going to be a need for universities to, to really start specialising, mm -hmm. um, to being known for something, whether that's health sciences or whether that's, you know, the best place to study architecture in, mm -hmm. in Australia is University X or accounting is University Y. Um, so I think that's, that's a trend, but I think the really big thing, and this is the real challenge um, to change, is the notion of a three-year course where you pay up front well, every year, you do a three-year intensive course of study, um, and then that's it. Uh, you might do another year, you might do a master's mm -hmm. degree, but then you're in the workforce and then off you go. You've got your career and that's what you train for. I think we all know that that's not the world, the, the way the world works today. And, and there are still so many, you know, governments and families and universities and uh, other bodies that have propped up this model. And I think that model is going to come under real pressure now. And, and I think the, the notion of going to study in a building to acquire information for three years at a cost of twenty to $40,000 a year will just seem anachronistic when we look back. And so what is the model? What's the future? What's the, what's, what's the alternative? And I think the relationship that a student has with their university, um, over time, I think it'll become a lifelong relationship. I think it'll be a long term. So it might be that instead of paying $25,000 up, uh, up front every year, you pay $500 a year, but you have a relationship with your university. You get special offers on this, you get short courses that you, you know, you get, you get invited to events, you get, you know, that are happening in your country um, or in your, in your area. I think, that, I think that notion of recurring revenue, my view is that's the future um, business model for universities. Um, and, and I think a lot of them are gonna struggle to get to, to that point um, because, and it's not going to happen. It's not like somebody just flicks a switch to a new business model. There's need, going to need to be a transition. But as more and more of you know the big four auditing firms, the big tech companies like Google, Apple, are placing less emphasis now on 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 uh, where you went to university, where you went to college, uh, and more on your resume, your experience. The, your, your experience. I think that, that 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 opens the door for universities who are in the best position, arguably, to really step through that door and, 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 and reinvent the future of, of you know, 
adult education, mm. probably not higher yeah. education. I think it's adult education that that is. You know, you might do a three. You might start your relationship with a university with a three month course, and then not do another course with that university for for another two years. Mm. But you might, and it might be a ten day course that you do next time. It might be a you know, an online course that you do the third time, but you, it's the same university uh, that you've got that relationship with. And I think that's the, I think there are real opportunities there. There are for advocacy, for, you know, um, learner gets learner, you know, recruits so that, you know, other people from, from, from. So I think that's the, that's, that's, those are my views. So some big, big trends and, and you know, they're, 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 they're not easy. They're not, this is not going to be easy. But it's 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 absolutely it's absolutely necessary in my view because that cliff, um, that sharp drop off the cliff, um, has 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 got has suddenly got ten years closer. Um, so. Um, and, and do you think uh, that the current um, uh, university reputation will play a part to the same extent that it does today in that new sort of um, that new landscape? I think I think I, I, I look the, the the established universities that have got global brands. You know, will will people still be lining up for an on-campus experience at Harvard University in a hundred years? A hundred percent, yes. Right. Um, the, the, the 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 brands that have got um, you know centuries in some case of 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 of, 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 of brand equity. Um, are the most likely to to to, to still be in, here, here in a hundred years' time, um, but not necessarily. You know, some of those brands are the ones that will struggle to change. Um, some of the newer, more nimble universities mm -hmm. that are far more progressive will actually find it more comfortable in this new world. Do we need? You know, can we introduce a short course, non-accredited? Um, yes, we can. Let's do it. You know, so so I think there's going to be. I, 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 I think you know it, it's it, it's going to be an interesting interesting t landscape to to watch play out. But I think there will be some consolidation. There has to be consolidation. Um, the question: Do you need forty two universities, forty three universities in Australia, or four thousand universities in, in in the US? Mm. Um, I mean, you know, look at the US example. There are gonna, there's going to be massive consolidation in that market. Um, there's going to have to be, especially with the lower tier universities, um, because they're just not going to, they're not all going to survive. Um, so I think even in Australia, I think we will see some consolidation. Um, there are obviously, were, there were talks pre-COVID with universities, certain universities merging. Um, I think those talks in some cases will be back on the table. Um, I think, you know, we're, we're all reading the same headlines around the, the loss of international student revenue. What's going to replace that? Are universities going to downsize? Are they going to, you know, are they going to reinvent themselves as co-working spaces? Why wouldn't they? You know, one of the one of the big challenges in the cities now, in in Australian cities, is as we've seen, people are now working from home. That genie's out of the bottle, and um, and a lot of people aren't going to go back five days a week. Um, so the need for flexible workspace, that's the sort of the WeWork, the Regis model of, of, of flexible office spaces has been has been absolutely endorsed by COVID. The problem is that that companies like WeWork and Regis are in the wrong parts of town. When the government's saying don't go into the city, or the boss is saying you don't need to come into the city anymore, um, that's not what, where I necessarily where I want my flexible working space. I think out in the suburbs, um, close to you know a five minute drive from where I, I live, I want to get out of home. I want to you know I want to get out of my home to go and work somewhere. But you know which entities have got you know flexible you know or, or, or excess capacity out in the suburbs? And then the answer is universities is one of them. They that you know there's an opportunity for them to move into that space. And when you think about learning and work, which go hand in hand. Um, I think there are. I think there are definitely opportunities there. I think big tech as well. The big tech companies. We're going to start to see Google, Apple, um, in particular those two. Um, Amazon to p potentially, but I think Google and Apple. Um, we're going to start seeing some some very significant partnerships. Google's already sort of moving into its own certification and own qualification. Um, so there's going to be. 
there's going to be some 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 you know ripples there. Um, but I think you know, going back to what I said, you know, as, it, as it's been said many times before, an opportunity, you know, a crisis is a, a terrible thing to waste. Mm. And I think this is the this is the time when, for a lot of universities that were meeting resistance from in, you know from within, that no, we don't need to change. Now everybody realizes that this is the opportunity to drive through change, and I think that's a huge opportunity. Mm. So I don't, I don't, I don't worry too much about Australian universities. I think they'll be okay. I think Destination Australia is is very, very, um, very assured. Um, but we've got to get those, we've got to get those borders and those vaccinations. The borders open, the vaccinations happening, because I think one of the risks in any of this is that out of sight, out of mind. Um, mm -hmm. And if the borders are closed for a couple of years, um, then there's a whole new sort of tourism, destination Australia, um, promotional global, global marketing campaign that's going to need to happen um, to, to really get people back into the, into the radar. Because our competitors, you know, Australia's competitors like the UK, like... Uh, Canada, um, US, New Zealand, even uh, are going to be there. You know, they're all facing. They're all having the same conversations, mm -hmm. and uh, and so it's it, it, it's yeah, it's really time to play to our strengths, um, and we've got a hell of a lot of strengths down here. Um, so Absolutely. so, but I think there will be consolidation. I think mm -hmm. that's inevitable. Um, I think it's 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 the borders. The borders may stay closed longer than uh, longer than a lot of people think, or it might take longer. They'll come back eventually, well, um, mm -hmm. but will they come back to study the same types of courses? Mm -hmm. I think that's a that's mm -hmm. a question that universities should be asking themselves. Awesome. Well, thanks again. Um, great insights there. Um, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. You're welcome.